Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name is Carlo, and today we're taking a look at Leica's new 35mm and 50mm Sumicron Aspherical SL lenses. And I have the APO Sumicron lenses right next to them, so we're going to do a little side by side comparison. So recently, Leica released these new 35 and 50 millimeter Sumicron SL lenses. Now, these are not to be confused with the APO Sumicron SL lenses. These are new optics made by Leica that bring more options to the SL line of cameras at a more appealing value. First, let me start off by stating that these new SL lenses are made in Leica's Portugal factory and they omit the APO lens corrections that these lenses have. We've seen the same thing done in Leica's M line of lenses with the 35 and 50 APO Sumicron Ms. At nearly half the price, these non-APO Sumicron SL lenses provide a lightweight alternative with fewer optical corrections that will be a great option for many current and future SL photographers or videographers. Before we get into these new SL spherical lenses, let's break down what makes an APO lens an APO lens. APO or APO, however you want to pronounce it, is short for apochromatic. Apochromatic refers to a very specific optical design that takes the red, green, and blue wavelengths of light and concentrates it in a very fine point in the center of the lens, resulting in a more color accurate and sharper image. So next time someone asks, what's apochromatic? You just tell them it funnels a rainbow through a very fine point and you get a sharp image. And this goes back to what makes these APO Sumicron SL lenses so special and sets it apart from its M counterparts. And it comes down to the electronics for the lens and how it communicates with the camera. Now that you know what makes an APO lens an APO lens, let's jump into these new aspherical SL lenses. As I mentioned earlier, these lenses are made in Leica's Portugal factory, which is the same factory that produces all of Leica's sport optics as well as the discontinued TL lenses. Just because it doesn't say made in Germany doesn't make it a less superior lens than these lenses. I should also mention that these lenses are not the same as the Panasonic ones. These are a full metal construction, and I think the Panasonic ones are made out of plastic. These new spherical SL lenses are noticeably smaller and lighter than their APO counterparts. And this is due to the new linear direct drive, which ensures fast, smooth, and relatively quiet autofocus. It's also worth noting that since these lenses are much lighter, it might be better for gimbal use for all you videographers out there. So the 35 APO SL lens weighs in at about 750 grams, whereas the 50 APO SL lens weighs in at 740 grams. Now, when we weighed the 35 Sumicron Aspherical SL lens, that came in at 400 grams, and the 50 Sumicron Aspherical SL lens weighed in at 402 grams. Clearly, these new Aspherical SL lenses are half the weight and also half the cost. So with the help of my colleague, Sam, we took all four of these lenses, put them on a Leica SL2S, and we tried to do a rough, side-by-side -side comparison of different lighting situations, different f-stops, to give you an example of how each lens performs. I know that I said that I used an SL2S for the photos, and this SL2 is just for show. As we were shooting, I noticed right away that the APO lenses rendered complex lighting situations more evenly. You can mostly see it in the shadows, and I'll get to that later in the video. The spherical lens elements have a more natural rendering, similar to what you would see in the Sumicron M lenses. And like I said, we tested all four lenses at various apertures and various lighting situations to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like wide open, stop down, and in a practical setting. So some main similarities between these four lenses is obviously the size and the weight. Up until now, the APO lenses were the lightest and most compact lenses for the SL system that Leica makes. When you have these newer spherical lenses, you have some options and you can go for image quality or you can go for maneuverability. I don't think there's a wrong option in that choice. And I will say that I was actually pretty pleased with the autofocus performance on all four of these lenses. I also recorded an autofocus test between these 35 lenses and I found that the spherical lenses had virtually no hunting when I was focusing on the foreground or the background or vice versa, whereas the APO Sumicron lenses 
they would have some hunting here and there. So I think that new autofocus system in these lenses is a huge improvement. Also the autofocus on these spherical lenses are much quieter than these APL lenses. Um, let's do a little test. So this is the 35. I'm gonna put it close to the mic and see if we can like hunt. All right, so. Nothing. All right, now let's do the 35 APO. Yeah, you can kind of hear that. Having experience with filming with these APO Sumicron SL lenses, the autofocus system in these newer spherical lenses are definitely much more quiet. After looking over the photos, it's clear that the APO Sumicron SL lenses outperform the spherical SL lenses, but I don't think the difference is that far off. The APO lenses really stand out, especially if you're going to print your photos. And I think if you're printing large scale, there's gonna be a huge gap in terms of image quality. But I don't think you're gonna notice a difference in image quality if you're gonna be looking at your photos through a screen or a phone or sharing them to social media. So going back to what I said about the APO lenses rendering much lighter and a little bit more clear, all has to do with micro contrast. And these lenses do a really good job of separating tonality within your photos so you can see much more shadow detail as well as range in your lights, darks. Pretty much your entire photo has much more detail and tonal range to work with in post. And here's a little fun fact about Leica APO lenses. They're apochromatic at all distances. In the past, all APO lenses aside from Leica were designed to be optimized at a specific distance ratio. In simple terms, they perform apochromatically at a specific distance. So I hope this video gave you a little bit more insight between the APO and the Aspiric SL lenses. I do think that in terms of sheer image quality, the APO, there's no question, it outranks the aspherical in every way, shape, or form. So I think if you're looking for a lens that delivers in sheer image quality, the APO is definitely gonna be the lens for you. But I also think that the aspherical SL lenses suit the needs of the everyday photographer or videographer. You get a lightweight, reliable, and sharp lens for half the cost of the APO lenses. Plus you're able to get these aspherical lenses as a bundle for the SL2 or the SL2S, which will save you a lot of money and you can spend more time photographing or making videos. I know we didn't get into all the technical details, but I think from a practical standpoint, no matter what lens you choose, you're ultimately gonna be happy with the result. So let me know down in the comments below what you think about these new lenses. Do you like the spherical? Do you prefer the APO? Which lens would you prefer? I'd love to hear what you think about them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out leicastoresf.com or camerawest.com. We also have a blog post with the photos from the video, so be sure to check that out. Also, we have all the tech specs and more photos of these lenses, so if you wanna go into more detail and learn about them, you can do that there. As always, my name's Carlo, and I'll see you next time.